Okay, yeah, getting back onto the Super Sovereign. The capacitors are in. Um, axial capacitors are a lot dearer than radios, but in my opinion, they look a lot nicer. And then my 150 microfarad um, capacitors were slightly different configuration. They were um, minus 10 or plus 50 tolerance. So I've got some plus or minus 20s. So I'm hoping these will be a bit closer to the 150 microfarads that we're looking for. Hundred and sixty one, that's much better. The other one's about hundred and ninety from memory, so uh, happy with that. The other ones uh, can go in when it's not quite so important. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got some six point eights, which I haven't got any six point eights at the moment, so I'm gonna need to probably get another tin out for those. So we've got some 68s. Again, got no tin for those at the moment. 22s. Again, no, I ain't got a space for those. <laughs> and what have I got here? I've got some radials. 6.8s. And I've also got some more 47s. So I've just put some Nichicon 47s in there. So it looks like I've ordered a couple of lots of those. So there we are. As I say, I've ordered all axial capacitors for this this radio. It's quite a lot of money. Um, obviously, I only need a few capacitors, but that's pointless just buying in the odd one or two. Otherwise, like I've had to do, you've just got to wait around for ages for parts to arrive, which is a real pain. So uh, that's 47s as well. Let's squeeze them in there. Right, let's get rid of that. But, uh, I'll just put the others, I'll find a container for the other ones and then we'll make a start on, uh, fit. well, finish recapping this one. Incidentally, I, I would say the capacitors I'm using mainly, these actuals, are the Vichy ones. Um, Vichy Sprague, or Sp Sprague, Sprague, I think. Um, really, because they're blue and uh, they do match the older Philips ones quite nicely so I always try and get the blue ones if I can try and go for the 105 degrees if they've got them if not you've got to settle for 85 but these sets shouldn't get anywhere near that temperature just thought I'd just mention that that was the variety I've got there and I think these are Panasonic's these radials or Nichicon's one of the two uh, okay, bear with me. Okay, I've just done a dry run now. I've put the um, capacitors in, just checked that all the positives are going the right way. I'd already soldered two in, but that's my other three now in the, this is the um, output amplifier board. Um, so I've got to solder up the back end. You see, I've still got this white stuff on uh, certain areas of the board here. I have uh, given it a clean with some IPA. I'm going to probably need to use some um, flux cleaner. So what I thought I'd do, I'd solder everything up first and then just do it all in one hit. I've decided to leave the um, lock fit transistors in now. So TR1, 2 and 4 are all lock fits. I'm going to leave them in. Of course, the output transistors seem to be working fine. I certainly... Uh, was loud enough before, didn't hear any distortion, so um, as I say, we'll have to 100% check once um, once it's all back together, but uh, I will check all the settings on this anyway, do an alignment. I think there is a, an alignment for the quiescent current on this, so uh, there we go. So again, as the board is a little bit um, messy, I am going to use some flux on this. No one I'm using the flux, so it's four. 100% sure you've got a nice shiny clean joint that doesn't blob up everywhere. Using leaded solder. It's, uh, it just works better than un unleaded. Lead free even unleaded.
Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Just start get up and uh, zoom it a little bit further. That's some problems with my autofocus on this camera for some reason at the moment. And for reference here, I've just got the um, the component layout, and I've marked on it what the uh, capacitor values were. Some quite substantial legs on some of these capacitors, so you do need a bit of heat to get the heat into the capacitor leg. The board doesn't want that heat, but um, there you are, that's all of them done. So I'm just going to snip the legs uh, off of those. sure that I see where they go. Snip that one up a little bit neater than that. So I'm just going to go in and touch them in again. I suppose really it is good practice to snip the legs off before you solder, but um, I usually go over them again anyway, so not had any problems yet with joints cracking after I've um, soldered them. There we are. So that's that board done. Just going to isopropyl it all off, give it some um, flux cleaner before it goes back in. But uh, that's that one done. So bear with me, I'm going to get on to some of the other boards now. Okay, I'm back with the main chassis now, that's the amplifier board done. Um, I've taken off that pesky uh, telescopic antenna as well to make this a little bit more portable. Uh, next up is the IF board. I've already have I changed those? No, I've got two to change in there. But I took out some, um, what according to the uh, component layout, it should have been 100 microfarads at 16 volts. But what I've pulled it, it's a 68 microfarad at 16 volts. So what I've done, I've gone and got another 68 microfarads at 16 volts. You can see the difference in size between a modern and, a, and an older capacitor. This is Vichet. Uh, the other ones are Philips. Yeah, a bit of a difference in size. But uh, if these last as long as the old Philips ones, all well and good. So I'm going to pop that one in. Let's bend the leads uh, roughly the same. Making sure that the capacitor value is at the top, which I haven't done. <laughs> So negative is that way. These have got a stripe on these capacitors which show you which way is negative. It points to negative. So you can't really go wrong with these. Well, I'm sure you can, but it's a lot easier than some of the older ones that aren't marked. Okay, so this is a little bit tricky. I'm not ta taking this board out. Maybe I should just drop it to death. Yeah, I'm just going to drop that board out a second. I'll like say it's literally just two screws in here. One of them is actually quite loose, so uh, probably just as well. It's just going to enable me to put the capacitor in a lot easier. There we go. I'll try and put the other one back in then. So negative is that way. Okay, so I'll square those leads up a bit. Okay. 
Not that you can see it in under here, but you know. I'm sure in years to come someone else will be doing exactly the same job as this, so you never know if change those. <laughs> right, okay. There we are, so let's hook that one down out of the way. Again, a little bit of a flux. I'm going to solder that one in situ. And find me the solder that is. Right, so I've got to change these two out next. Now again, it says it should be 6.4. We've got 6.8s fitted. So... I've got some 6.8s. So that's what it's having back in it. Anyway, I'm sure you don't want to watch me recap the whole of this. Not that there's that many to do. I've already done a few. So um, I'm going to leave it at that and join me again for the next stage when I finish a recap. Okay, so there we have it. The recap is done. So uh, left to right then. This is the IF board. There's a capacitor underneath there, C24, which I've done. Two on here, C2123, both done. This is the amplifier board, which you saw earlier. So one, two, three, four, five uh, capacitors in there, all changed. This is electrolytics, obviously. Um, this main switchboard up here, B606, only two capacitors in there. Electrolytics, I've changed both of those. C12, I can't see that one, is C... C8. Both changed. Uh, the I think this is the AM board on this side, A505. Um, yeah, it would be. Again, there's four capacitors on that one, all changed. And the little tone board there, there's 150 microfarad capacitor on that one. That one's been changed. And I've still got that one um, actually taken out because uh, I want to get in behind these and give the, um, the contacts a good lubrication. Then I should put that back in. So, um, looking good so far. As I say, I'm going to leave the lock fits in. If I do find there's any issues in it, then uh, I can look at them later. But at the moment, they're staying. So, yeah, uh, capacitors. Yeah, you know, they're, they're nearing the end of their expected lifetime, so it's worth changing them. But the transistors, they're either working or they're not working, really, I suppose. They do... Um, they do get a little bit noisy, those lock fits sometimes, very hard to, to trace, so I suppose at some time in the future it might be worth um, swapping them out, but at this stage I want to leave them in. Um, so next jobs, uh, I've lubricated the uh, FM uh, tuning capacitor, I'm going to lubricate the AM shortwave one as well. I'm going to lubricate all the pulleys in here, I'm going to get all the switches uh, lubricated, put some switch cleaner in them all, then I'm going to put the chassis back together because that's pretty much done. So next it's really moving on to the dial plate and the case. So that's the electrically bit should be sorted. Oh no I don't suppose to connect it all back up but uh, as I say got a fair bit of cleaning to do inside here and uh, got to put the side cheeks back in. So yeah, I'm going to rebuild this, put it back together, then I'm going to make a start on the case. 
Okay, well I've got some um, got it at this stage. I was just going to show you what I've been doing. So uh, basically, I've got this little. I don't know where I got this in one of the cheap shops. It's some um, German precision oil pan. Look. So it's got sort of fairly light oil in it. And all I've done really is gone around all these pulleys and the spindles of the um, uh, tuning knobs for AM and FM and uh, just lubricated them really. You can lubricate the top of the um, other spindles but don't put uh, a lot in there because you don't want that going down in the inside the control really. But, uh, very useful little pen that is, you just get a fraction of oil on there, that's all you need. And uh, for doing the switches, I'm using this, which um, I'm a sort of service old man really, I always use service old, but um, all the Americans seem to be using this stuff, the Oxid D5, so I've tried it. Um, you've got a different, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but in the top there. You can actually adjust the spray as well, so you've got low, medium and high by turning the nozzle. I learnt that to my detriment, because <laughs> I was thinking, Christ, this is coming out really quick, what on earth is going on? And I had it on high, but uh, yeah, you only need it on low. And basically what I'm going to do here, I've got my volume control. Uh, where are we? Yeah, you can see that. Now, no need to go in the, in that side of it because the potential is actually in the back, so just get it in the back. Give it a quick squirt. You don't need loads of this stuff. That's my phone again. Okay, so about that. So, next stage for me is these switch banks. Now I can get my nozzle into the back of most of these. The new two I can't get out of these so I'm going to need to probably scratch some in from the front of here. It's a shame because I'd like to soak them all the way down through. But again basically stick the nozzle in the back end of them. Give them all a squirt. And give them a good Working on now to get that switch cleaner down inside. As I say, these other two, you'll have to try and get some switch cleaner down through the spindles of them. Let's have a quick look at that in the hope that it does get in there. Okay, so I'm happy that they're lubricated. So I'm just having a look, see what else I've got to lubricate really. So, tuning condenser. Again, do not get any oil on these veins at all. Just down right at the points where they join the main frame. Just a little tiny smidgen in there couple on where these retaining springs are. Bit on the top there. A bit in the pulley itself. The oil 
much right the way around it. Okay, well, we have got another little push button there, look. That's a little battery check one, so we'll give that a squirt as well. They all feel really nice there. Uh, there is a switch, the on off switch in the back of the um, volume switch. Let's see if we can get in there. Okay. Yeah, there's a little tiny hole just in there. You can see that or not. Let's get the camera down a little bit. focus. So you notice there's a little, uh, just a little hole there. Uh, there we are. There's a little tiny hole there that we can just squeeze a little bit of switch cleaner in. Hopefully that'll get in there. There we are. So um, as I say, oops, forgot the uh, Tone controls. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit. Yeah, I've got the tone controls here. So um, again, you've got a little keyhole in the back that you can get a little square in. Felt that. Um, yeah. And there we go. So I'm now going to reassemble this. I'm going to um, just clean the boards off, get the flux off that I've um, put on there. I've got the side pieces that I've painted um, to go back in. And that's the um, chassis done. I can't see anything else wrong with it. It's going to need a bit of trimming, I expect, when I get it all back together. But um, you never know. I might not even need that. So uh, thanks for watching this um, this instalment. And uh, join me on the next one where we tackle the old case. See how I get on. Thanks for watching. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. And uh, join me on the next one.